Hi, today I'd like to talk about how to transfer files from your Korg D3200 to your PC. In a previous video, I talked about how to backup files or backup songs to the PC. Uh, when you do that, that's great, and it does it in a format that's recognizable by the Korg. But if you wanted to put that into some other kind of workstation, it wouldn't work. So with this method, what we can do is transfer or export WAV files of the song, which would, each WAV file would indicate as a separate channel or a separate track, track rather. And then from there, you can import that into your DAW and use any kind of program you want. So it's a pretty easy setup. Um, I had to go through it a couple times to learn it, but we'll just start right here. So first thing we want to do is choose our song. Uh, in this case, I've got a song, Texas Ticket Blues. And so it's selected. I'm just going to hit it again so you can see that. So it's, it's whoops. So if it was a different song, you would select it, obviously. OK. There you go. So that's the active song. That's all we're trying to do there. Now what you want to do is we're going to mark the beginning and end of the song, like so. So first things first, we want to be at the beginning of the song, and then we're going to be at the end of the song. So right now we're at the beginning, but let's show how you would do that if for some reason it wasn't at the beginning. Okay, so if we weren't at the beginning, you'd want to hit stop, rewind, and that would take you to the beginning. Okay, I'll hit the buttons first, but you're going to hit store, loc1, and then store, loc3, and you'll see why we're doing that in a second. It's, it's a little confusing, and I'm not sure why you have to do it this way, but um, apparently you do. So let's look at that again on the screen so you can see what that's going to show like. So when I hit store, it comes up with the question, okay? We want to store your spot here, okay? And when you hit loc1, it goes away, and then you hit store again, okay? And then you're going to hit loc3, okay? Now we're going to repeat the process, and this time we're going to go to the end of the song, to go to the end of the song, we're going to hit stop and fast forward. So as you can see, we're at the end of the song in seven and a half minutes, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to mark the locations of the end of the song down here, just like we did with the beginning. Again, we'll hit store, loc2, and store, loc4. Now I'm not sure why you have to do that twice like that, so Loc 1 and Loc 2 would indicate the beginning and the end of the song, as does Loc 3 and Loc 4. Uh, I don't know if it's something to do with the stereo or something. I have no idea, but we'll just, we'll just do it that way. Okay, the next step is we're going to hit Track. And if you notice, it opens up a different menu. And we're going to go to the Edit Track tab. Okay. All right. Now, you'll have two different things up here that we're interested in. It's these, where these dialog boxes are in the center. You've got a source and a destination, okay? Okay, we're going to click on the source. All right. It's right there. Now, this is kind of interesting. So here you've got, these are the tracks you want to select. So if you want to just do one track, you would hit one, or mono, rather. If you want to hit, do your stereo output, you'd do that, and it would be tracks one and two. But what we need to do is select a block of tracks, and you can't do, like, in, like you couldn't choose, like, one I'll just try to do it. So if, let's say I wanted to do four tracks. Let's just show you an example. And let's say I wanted to do one, two, three, five, and not have four. It just shifts the entire block set over there. I don't even think I can start in the middle of a block, can I? No, see, it's gonna, it does it in these blocks of four. So a lot of songs, depending on how many songs or how many tracks you have, uh, you need to pay attention to where you want to. Most of the time you're going to start at one, okay? But we want to do, you could do eight tracks. And I believe this song has 12, has 12 tracks, but you have to record or have to select 16 tracks. It's just the way it's set up. So it's these blocks of 4, 8, 16, and then 32. So it just doubles each time. Uh, so that's fine. So we're just going to have some extra empty files that gets created and gets transport, transported over. And that's fine, because you can just delete those. So once you selected the number of tracks that you need, hit OK. All right. Now we're going to go to Destination. Okay, now this time we're going to hit clip for clipboard. Okay, all right, so it's going to send this to the clipboard. All right, so we've selected tracks 1 through 16, and we're sending them to the clipboard. Then we're going to execute this, and this goes pretty quick at this point. 
we're going to hit yes, and boom, it's done, okay? So now that's told the Korg that we want to copy WAV files, our output WAV files, and we're putting those on the, on the USB drive. All right, next we want to go to export, the export tab. We're still on the track button, but now we're going to export. Okay, now here, uh, this is a little interesting. So you get five spots to name your file, and then it's got 01 uh, to start the numbering of each file. So in this case, we're going to just call it, I'll just call it text tick. <laughs> everything, everything is going to be called no name if you don't change the name. So, okay. Now, let's, let's try to change those numbers. Let's see if that even works. So I'll go to the one, whoop, if I can. See, I can't even highlight those numbers there. All right, so this is automatic. So Korg's going to set that up as being a five, five character name, then 01. And then what this will do in our case, it's going to go through 01 up to 016. And so we've renamed it. And you got to watch out when you rename this. You might have a song, that, two songs that have similar beginnings, like my home away from home or my home in Mississippi or something like that. And if you tried to put my home in there, you wouldn't know which song you're talking about. So you may have to come up with a coding system if you've got a lot of similar songs that start with similar names. Okay, we'll click OK. All right. Now, at this point, we're going to execute. Now, this is what takes a while. Um, to do one file doesn't take that long, but we're going to do 16 of them. All right, so we're going to export 16 of these WAV files. And in order to do that, we're going to hit Execute. All right, are you sure? Yes. Okay, now this is going to take a while, and we'll just come back when it's done. Okay, we're done. It took about 10 minutes to do those 16 tracks. And that was a seven-minute song, so uh, or seven minutes of... Well, it may not have even been seven minutes of song. That could have been like a lot of blank space at the end, too. But whatever the case, it took about 10 minutes for that to go through. So if you had a lot of these to, to export, then that would take a little bit of time, obviously. Okay, so we click OK. All right, so now it's exported, it, and we should be in the USB portion of the Korg. Okay, at this point, we're going to hit Song to get us back out of that menu. And now we're going to go into System MIDI. Okay, System MIDI. All right, we need to go to PC File, Tab, all right, and this will show what the file is. So in the WAV file directory, whoop, open, I just want to double click on this, it doesn't work that way, is the various files associated with that, with that song. So this is each track of the song, or each channel. Uh, there you go, 16. Okay, looks good. At this point, we can do USB mode right here. Okay, so it's kind of weird. The Korg has those the drive partitioned into some odd, I think that's kind of odd, but uh, the only way it can transmit information to a computer is through this USB mode. So obviously I'm connected to the computer with a USB cable. Okay, I don't know if you heard that or not. Well, right now we're connected and you can see it says USB slave mode and it'll stay connected until we say exit. Okay, now we're going to move over to the computer. Okay, now we're on the computer and we change mice, mouse devices. <laughs> it's always a problem when I'm working on this Korg and a PC at the same time. I always want to keep grabbing the mouse to, to control the Korg. All right, so we've got, this is the Korg, so it shows up on our PC as Korg D32, and it's, in this case, it's Drive E. It might be something different on yours, but there's Korg. And so it, it puts them in different file directories, and when I was playing with it last night, you pretty much, ha it'll automatically go to these different directories, so you can't just uh, willy-nilly put them in the what directory you want. So when we open the WAV file, you can see it's got 16 tracks, and it's text tick, or one. Now, if you had two songs with a similar name, as I was saying before, this is where you would have a hard time telling them apart. Okay. In fact, I don't know if it would, if it would, re, if it would actually let you do text tick twice. How that would work? If there'd be an error message or something, or it would overwrite. So anyway, so just be aware of that limitation. Now, at this point, just to make life easy, I'm just going to take it right into Audacity. Okay. And just to show that this, so each song has its. Uh, let me, let me just click on one here so you can hear it. This is a track. Okay, and then 
I shudder to have you hear me sing. I got those Texas ticket blues. Okay. Oh, that was good timing. Um, so I've got my 16 files selected. We're going to bring these over into Audacity. All right. And we can close this out, maybe. Just got to jump in front of the screen. Here we go. And so we're going to do this basically 16 times going through this operation. I don't know why this ghost of an image wants to stay there, but it does. And depending on how your computer's set up, what the speed is and everything, this can go a lot faster. And we'll fast forward through this section. Okay, so that pulled all 16 tracks in. And I notice I've got something on tracks 15 and 16. I'm not sure what that is. Got some saturated tracks there. So I pulled it right into my DAW here, and that's one way of doing it. And so I can I can save this as a you know as a project file within Audacity or whatever DAW you're using. Uh, the other alternative, and actually what I'm doing because I am looking to upgrade my actually get a real DAW for, <laughs> and not just use Audacity. But I pulled a bunch of files over from the Korg, and I'm just storing them as individual files. Let's see and so the other method, which would make sense depending on what you're doing, would then for me to pull in just the WAV files. I've, what I've got here is just a directory of all these WAV files of just some of the songs that I want to transfer over to the new DAW. Uh, some of my older stuff I'm not going to worry about, but uh, certainly anything that's semi-important, or maybe it's not, I don't know. Uh, we're just going to put that over into this other directory. And then when, it's, when I finally get, decide on what DAW I want to use, I can pull all these files in and recreate the whole song from there. So I'm just going to pull them over. All right, so now these are just going to sit there until I'm ready to put them into a new DAW. All right, so in this case, we're basically done with the Korg, and I don't need them in that wave directory anymore. So I like to reselect just to be on the safe side, and then we'll delete. Now those have done; those are removed from the Korg right now. They've been deleted. Now at this point, you've got some choices, so we'll go ahead and we're going to go back to the Korg. So our songs are over on our PC now, safe and sound. We've got individual tracks that we can then import to our DAW, and we'll have a 21st century way of doing our music. Now, let's move back to the Korg. All right, so we're done with the Korg. We're just going to exit. All right. Working, working. Okay. So now we're out of the USB mode, and we're kind of done with that. Now, what I've been doing, because actually what I'm doing is I'm going to be moving away from this Korg workstation and going to the DAW, and I've got some other changes I want to make. So at this point, I'm actually deleting the songs off the Korg. And so to do that, we're going to hit song. It'll pull up the songs. Let's say for some reason this wasn't the song I wanted to do, but uh, let's just go back to the song list. Okay, and so we would select our song and hit OK. All right, that's the song we want. Okay, so this song has been backed up as a Korg backup file, so I feel secure that if I mess this up, I've got that stored somewhere. And I do want to clear off the drive on this Korg, okay, because I'm going to be selling it. So we're going to hit delete. All right, well, yes, we want to delete this song. Okay, and off it goes. So it goes to the next song. So. Texas Tickets is no longer there. Okay? All right, well, so it's a kind of a simple operation. It's it's not really clear if you look in the manual, but it's relatively straightforward. It's time-consuming, as is a lot of file processing times on the Korg, uh, but it can be done, and it's really not that painful. If you had a lot of these to do, if you had, like, hundreds of songs, then that would definitely be a problem. But that's one reason I wanted to move over to a, a more modern system, uh, and we'll, I'll figure out what that is later. But for, first things first was to get my songs moved over and I'm not actively using them or anything, but when I start recording, I'd like to uh, start kind of start fresh and uh, streamline my system. And I love the Korg, but I think I just need to move, move forward. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, please subscribe. I want to thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. I'm going to leave a link to that previous video I did on, I swapped out the hard drive in this Korg. I think I put like a 300 or a 320 gigabyte hard drive in this. Uh, it certainly has plenty of capacity. And this thing hasn't missed a beat in, in the 10 years I've owned it. 
<clears throat> and I guess it's about a 15 year old machine or even more older than that. Uh, very dependable machine. I highly recommend if you if you want to get into this level of recording. I, I really it has a lot of benefits. Uh, I'm just getting. I'm just going to move on to a more modern system because uh, I don't actually need all the features and things that this has on it. Even though I uh, I know I'll be giving up some of the flexibility that this has that the modern that a some of the other systems don't have. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Thank you.